I was first introduced to Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch when I received my vicarage placement. That's an internship for a pastor. Um, it was a few years ago. It's our third year of the seminary training process uh, where I went to seminary. And so it was a part of my internship, was, was part-time here at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. That was my first introduction to the ranch. I had no idea what it was. I had never heard of it before. So I show up and I get here and they say, here's Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. Here's our residents, this is what we do. We help them, they are, they are victims, they are at-risk youth, and we are here to show them the, the love of Christ and to help them get better. That was kind of my first introduction to it. Had a whole year of that, uh, just working here maybe five to 10 hours a week, some very minimal interaction with residents, uh, hardly any interaction with staff. Um, a few years later, after I finished up my, my schooling, um, I got a full-time call to come and be the chaplain here, and it's been very, very rewarding. It's a wonderful ministry. I'm so happy to be a part of it. First and foremost, everyone's position here at, at Dakota Boys and Girls is about the residents. We are here to care for them. Uh, but my position is actually a, a little above and beyond that as well. Um, in addition to providing care and support uh, spiritually uh, for the residents, I'm also here to support the staff. Uh, so as they go day to day caring for the residents, I'm here to care for them as well. The caregivers are often a very neglected part of any treatment program, whether it's, it's religious or whether it's secular. And so part of, a big part of my job is being here, making sure the caregivers are getting everything they need, uh, providing them with the, the spiritual outlet, the, the religious outlet they need. Uh, but on a weekly basis, that looks like a lot of uh, going to meetings with, with the staff and supporting them in prayer, Bible studies, devotions. Uh, we've recently started sending out daily morning devotions to the entire uh, staff of the ranch across all three campuses here in Minot, in Bismarck, and also in Fargo. Uh, we do chapel services um, every week here in Minot. I do those uh, every Thursday. We also have them on Thursdays in Bismarck and Fargo with my spiritual life specialists in those locations. I'm involved quite a bit with the, uh, the teaching of the spiritual life programming for the residents. That's classes that, that through walking through biblical uh, studies, we, we look at how best to serve them with uh, issues of anger, issues of guilt, issues of, of neglect, them being the victims of abuse, of, of being victims of violence, being exposed to violence and, and these sorts of things, uh, helping them get over those feelings, helping them through steps of forgiveness and reconciliation uh, between uh, their families and with each other, um, and just doing what we can to, to present them with, with the healing words that God has for us in His Word, uh, and mainly to present them with Jesus, only the love and the healing that only He can bring. Uh, that's my first and foremost task, is to show Jesus to our residents and to our staff as well, but mainly, as always, the residents. We exist to help at-risk youth succeed in the name of Christ. Our mission is to help at-risk youth and their families succeed in the name of Christ. Uh, we try to do that as much as we can and as best as we can, uh, whether that's providing them with um, you know, one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can talk through the struggles in their lives that's done um, in with, with secular uh, therapists as well as uh, with our spiritual life specialists and with myself. Uh, we can walk them through confession, absolution, those types of things, provide them with prayer, always praying for the people. Uh, it's a big, a big part of the job here, um, but that's what we do. We want them to be whole again, to be healed. Uh, these, these are at-risk youth. They very much are, and we're trying to make them um, the best people they can be, and the only way to do that is to show them the love of Christ. Some of the programs we have here uh, to provide care for our residents are our weekly uh, groups. They have a lot of different groups, uh, whether it's for occupational therapy, uh, tr more traditional therapy, or we even have a horse therapy program. Um, we also have spiritual life programs, and that's a, that is walking them through the basics of, of Christian life, the basics of, of the biblical narrative, God's saving love for us, his history of that, uh, and applying it to their lives, showing them how God cares for them on a daily basis. Uh, so that's uh, usually an hour each week for each of the residents. They have an opportunity for that, and then we have chapel uh, every week, and that's another major uh, focus for them from the spiritual life department. They're able to come and get a worship service in every single week 
uh, and it's been very helpful. Those are the main kind of programs we have in place for the residents. Um, as far as people um, in the outside helping the residents, uh, some of the programs we have, we have a pen pal program. Uh, it's called Hope Notes. Um, it started out of Bismarck, but we're starting to apply it here in Minot, and we're looking at getting it started in, Biz or in Fargo as well. Um, that is people in congregations uh, in the communities or even across the country. We haven't got quite that big yet, <laughs> but it's in the, the North Dakota area. Um, people will sponsor a, uh, a one of our residents. They'll write little encouraging notes. Uh, we tell them you can't expect to get anything back, but just them knowing that somebody out there cares for them is giving them words of encouragement from time to time. Maybe they give them a little gift at Christmas, you know, just a cute little thing, a little card telling them they're thinking about them, they're praying for them. That provides an awful lot of hope and an awful lot of encouragement for our residents. So that's a really fun program for them. Uh, we're getting some of the kids involved uh, in servant event type things. We're bringing them out into the community, um, whether they're helping out at our thrift stores, stocking shelves and sorting through donations, or they're going into the nursing homes and visiting with, with the elderly. They're getting some interaction with, with people out there, uh, and it's very therapeutic for them to help somebody else. Uh, so those are some programs we're doing as well. We are at a very uh, unique place here in Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch in our um, the, the roads that our organization provides for a, being able to show people the gospel, show the love that God has for them. Um, these are people that are broken, they're hurting, they have dealt with some of the darkest, most depraved activities we can even imagine. Uh, and we're able to go in there and show them that this is not how it's supposed to be. You have a God that loves you very much and has done so much for you. Um, we oftentimes assume that absolutely everybody's heard the, this message before, um, but we find that that's not true. These kids have never known that kind of love. They've never known normal family dynamics. They've, they've only seen the negative side of the world, the sin broken side of the world. And so to show them that that has been taken care of, that has been forgiven and repaired for them in what Jesus has done for us, it provides so many beginnings for the healing power that God has for them. That is a gift that this place is able to capitalize on better than I've seen in any other ministry out there because we are dealing with people that have been crushed by this world. They've been crushed by the sin of others and they're primed now to be just fed the love that God has for them. With the way our programs are set up here at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch, we do allow uh, for a lot of mentoring and, and discipleship uh, sorts of activities with our residents as they're going through the spiritual life programming. They're learning, you know, basic principles um, from biblical perspectives on how to apply those in their lives, whether it's how to live a repentant life or how to forgive others, um, how to um, do these things in the name of Christ, how to fulfill their vocation, their occupation, how to serve others uh, because God has already served them. Um, those are, these are themes that are present in a lot of our programming. Uh, but then even just with the cottage staff, I mean, all of the residents have a cottage where they are residents. We are a residential treatment program. Well, there's staff in these cottages and the staff by modeling, you know, good life examples are able to um, provide that stability and, and that example for the, the, the residents. And it provides them with just a, a wonderful model of, of what it means to, to be a person existing in this world sharing with others, helping others in the name of Christ. They've been cared for very practically in a very real way, tangibly here at the ranch, and they're able to then take that experience as they go forward and are discharged into normal life again. They're able to take everything they learned and apply it. If you want to get involved with Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch, you want to support our ministry, there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, of course, you could donate. That's, that's a, a wonderful thing. Uh, we are very thankful and very appreciative for all of the donations we get. It's a great way. But if, if that's something that you can't quite do right now or it's just you'd like to do something else, we have a lot of opportunities for you as well. Uh, one big um, opportunity is we have a series of thrift stores, Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch thrift stores. Uh, we've got a number of them in the state of North Dakota and we've got one in Minnesota as well. Uh, anytime you are shopping at these thrift stores and anytime you are making donations to these thrift stores, you are supporting our ministry. You are helping us provide care to our residents. So that is a great way to get involved. 
We also have servant event opportunities. Uh, all throughout our country, congregations send their youth out to all over the place to do mission trips, to do servant work for people. We're one of the places you can go. You can get involved at any one of our three campuses um, and you can send your youth, send a, a group of adults even if you'd like, uh, and you can come spend time serving our residents, serving us, uh, whether it's painting barns, putting up fences, making repairs to our cottages, or sorting thrift store donations. There's always more work that needs to be done, work that we don't necessarily have the time to get to at, as soon as we would like or is just beyond our scope at this time. You can come in and be a part of our ministry by helping support us through servanthood and that's a great way we'd encourage you to get involved. Um, we've also got a series of quilt auctions throughout the year. Um, each of our campuses throws a big quilt auction. We call it Pigs and Blankets. Um, has nothing to do with the food, it's just a fun name. Uh, I know there's a lot of quilters out there. You got, we've got a lot of churches that have quilting groups. Um, here's your chance to, to not only enjoy your craft, and enjoy your, your hobby and your talent, but to let that talent serve others. Uh, if you donate your quilts, they, they go to auction and they bring in a lot of funds that we use throughout the year to keep our programs up and running and to keep providing continuous care for our residents. Um, We've also got uh, that Hope Notes program I mentioned before, the, the pen pal type program. You can say you want to get involved. We'll get you sponsoring a, uh, one of our residents. You start writing some encouraging notes. It's a great way to help us in touch the life of a specific resident to help them and give them encouragement and hope for the future. And of course, uh, a great way to support us is through your prayers. We can always use prayer. Prayer is a very powerful tool that we've been given and anytime you're praying for us, we appreciate it because it's making a difference. Pray for our staff, pray for our residents, pray for the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch Foundation, pray for us as an organization that helps youth. Your prayers will be answered. Thank you for them. It's all about the youth. The youth, they are our future. I know it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. These are the people that are going to be taking care of us when we are old. They're going to be taking care of our country and taking care of the future children. And if they haven't been provided with the proper care and haven't been given the proper tools they need to succeed, where are we going? We are here about the kids. We're helping them see the love that God has for them, the love that's been provided in Christ, giving them that great example, that great power of forgiveness, that gift of eternal life, and allowing them to use that and apply it in the future. That's why we're here. We're here to help these kids succeed. As you look at other ministries and throughout the, the country, throughout the things you've been ex uh, exposed to in your life, I would just ask you to, to consider Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. We are here for a very good cause. It's for our kids. It's for the kids of your neighbors. It's for your children. We are here to care for them, to show them the love of Christ, to show them the love of a God who cares deeply for them. And with, without that, we really have no hope. So really, if you want to get down to brass tacks, we're here to provide kids with hope. Hope for the future, hope for their lives, hope for things that have been broken to be rebuilt. When you think about ministries, you think about getting involved anywhere, please think of Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. We're eternally grateful to you for all that you do because it's helping our youth succeed.